Welcome to the presentation on metrics. This is Jeannie Hoover, and I will be sharing information about the COOP framework developed by the Open Education Group. By the end of this presentation, you will be familiar with what COOP stands for and different types of metrics that can be applied to your OER program and OER adoptions. We're using the Open Education Group's breakdown of metrics, which is COOP. The Open Education Group developed a framework to research the impact of OER adoption. This framework is broken down into four pieces. C for cost, O for outcomes, U for usage, and P for perceptions. We're gonna take a look at each of these indicators in the following slides. As Mandy showed you in the first video, you can access these resources through the OER Metrics Toolkit. I highly recommend the guidebook to research on open educational resources adoption here on the screen. This is found in the OER Metrics Toolkit that Mandy mentioned. This guidebook can help you learn more about these different indicators of impact, as well as the types of controls you need to think about as well. Let's talk about cost. Cost metrics are often very important for campuses and OER programs. It is often the very first metric we can see and one of the top reasons we talk about OER, as it saves students money. Often when we think of cost metrics, we think of cost savings from switching from a commercial textbook over to an OER. And this is a really great place to start. But as you can see from the slide, there are lots of layers associated with cost. Everything from the cost of textbooks, campus bookstore revenue, tuition revenue, and more. It can be challenging to get all of the data pieces for your metrics. For example, maintaining a count of courses that use open textbooks, as well as the number of students that are enrolled in those courses, and collecting that data on a semester basis. Additionally, as librarians, we typically don't have access to all the pieces of data for these cost metrics, especially the latter ones. So in this case, you may need to collaborate with other offices on your campus, such as the budget office or maybe the Center for Institutional Research. I think it's also important to note that even for this indicator and for the ones that we're gonna be covering in later slides, that you may need to start on a more simple level before going into more advanced metrics for your program. So for example, starting with cost savings is a really easy place to start. And then as your program develops, moving on to some of the other metrics. While cost is a big metric, we see a lot of interest in the effects of OER on student success and student outcomes. And for some stakeholders, this is really what counts. This can be measured in a number of ways, including looking at changes in student grades, completion and drop rates, enrollment intensity, and more. Like cost, this kind of data may require you to collaborate with other offices on your campus. Outcomes can also be measured by comparing the classroom level outcomes of students required to use a commercial textbook versus an open textbook. There may be additional challenges with this metric as well. For example, you may run into control issues say are there different teachers leading each class how much does attendance or class participation contribute to this grade it can be hard to address these control issues so you may want to collaborate with researchers in your education department on campus i also recommend looking back at the open ed group's recommendations for coop they have some great advice on how to address control issues for this metric. Let's explore usage. With OER, we see interactions with text in ways we don't see it with commercial textbooks. And this is thanks to permissions from open licenses. So both the faculty and the student can engage with the material in very unique ways. Uses data tries to capture this information. So how much faculty and students are using OERs and in what ways are they using them? 
The Open Education Group uses the DIME model for OER adaption. And this includes deleting material, inserting material, moving material, or editing material. But you might be more familiar with this as the five R's. Like other indicators, this can be difficult to obtain the data. And you might need to break it down on multiple levels. For example, to determine who is using open textbooks, you might survey the faculty, reach out to department chairs, or talk to the bookstore. While they'll give you information on who's using it, it doesn't tell you how people are actually using it. For that data, you would need to go to the faculty members themselves and talk to them about how they use their open textbooks. I think it's also important to note that faculty may not necessarily be comfortable adapting materials in the beginning. So they might adopt a textbook and then in later semesters actually work with remixing it or adapting it. So this data may change over time. For student use data, you can look at information like download counts, website hits, or data obtained using the learning management software. You can also look at focus groups or interviews for either of those populations. As noted, this can be hard to capture. And this might be an area where we see more development from the open community down the road. Let's explore our last indicator, perceptions. In some ways, perception data can be easier to obtain than some of the other indicators we explored earlier in this presentation. This kind of data includes faculty and student perceptions of their experience using OERs. So some questions you can ask are, what do faculty and students think about and feel towards OER? How do they judge OER effectiveness relative to their experience with traditional textbooks? You can even expand perceptions to include other stakeholders, like parents, for example. Some of the most common ways to obtain this data is through surveys or reviews of textbooks. Like any other indicators, there are some challenges with this type of data. For example, you may find that faculty and students don't understand what OER means. However, as your OER program grows, you may see that this data changes as more of your stakeholders understand what OER means. That concludes the COOP framework. However, there are other indicators of OER impact that you may want to explore. For example, downloads of an OER textbook, page visits, potentially peer reviews, or even the number of adaptions or remixes of an OER textbook. You can also include the number of print copy sales from your bookstore. Take this time to think about other indicators that weren't captured in this presentation. Is there anything that you would want to add to your own metrics? That concludes this presentation on metrics. Again, please visit the OER metric toolkit to get more information and details on how you can include metrics in your OER program. Thank you.